Now we are going to create a Pokemon detail component, which the user will be redirected to when clicking on a Pokemon card. Next, let's open the app component and add a new path which corresponds to the detail page. It will have the Pokemon name parameter at the end of the path and it will show the Pokemon detail component. Next, we need to add a link to the Pokemon card component to redirect the user to the detail page of the clicked Pokemon. For that, we will use the link component of React Router DOM and pass the Pokemon path, adding the Pokemon name at the end. Let's also remove any styling added to the link using text decoration none. We will also move the card media and card content components inside the link component. Now, if we click a Pokemon card, it will redirect us to its detail page. Next, in the Pokemon Detail component, we are going to use the use params hook from React Router DOM to retrieve the Pokemon name from the Pokemon URL. This hook returns an object with the parameters in the current URL. In this case, the Pokemon name, which is Bulbasaur. Next, let's create a new custom hook to retrieve the detailed information for a particular Pokemon. Let's name it Use Pokemon. Let's also create a use Pokemon props interface to make this custom hook receive a Pokemon name as a prop. Now we are going to create a detailed Pokemon interface to make a representation of what we will receive from the Pokemon API. The detailed endpoint of the Pokemon API returns an object with a lot of information. We're only going to add the attributes we need, otherwise this interface would be huge. We are going to add the name, weight and height of the Pokemon. We are also going to add the sprites object, from which we will only take the from default image. Next, we are going to add the abilities attribute, which is a list of objects. We are going to make a Pokemon ability interface for an individual ability. and add an array of Pokemon abilities to our detailed Pokemon interface. Let's do the same for the types attribute. Creating a Pokemon type interface and adding an array of Pokemon types to our detailed Pokemon interface. And let's repeat the same process for the stats attribute. Creating a Pokemon stat interface and adding an array of Pokemon stats to our Pokemon detail and adding an array of Pokemon stats to our detail Pokemon interface. Let's go back to the use Pokemon hook and add a Pokemon state that can be of type detail Pokemon or null. Also, we are going to add an is loading boolean so we know when we have finished retrieving the data from the Pokemon API. Next, we are going to create a fetch Pokemon function to call the detailed Pokemon endpoint of the Pokemon API. First, let's check if the Pokemon name is not null, and if it doesn't, we are going to set is loading to true and call the endpoint. We are going to use the same Pokemon URL constant and add the Pokemon name at the end. And also, we are going to tell Axios that we are receiving a detailed Pokemon as a response. Finally, we are going to set the Pokemon state and set its loading to false. With this, we can now return the Pokemon object and the is loading boolean states from this hook. We also need to add a use effect hook, so we call the fetch Pokemon function each time the Pokemon name prop changes. We will call the function if the Pokemon name prop holds a value. Let's go back to the Pokemon detail component and import the use Pokemon hook. We will pass the Pokemon name as a prop to the use Pokemon hook 
This is the Pokemon name we retrieved earlier from the URL using the useParams hook. Let's show the name attribute of the Pokemon to see if it's working. As you can see, it's working. Let's now start adding some structure to our component. Let's add a container component and a grid component inside it. This grid component will arrange our components vertically when using flex direction column. Let's also add some spacing between our components using spacing too. First, we are going to check if the Pokemon data is still loading, and if it is, we are going to show an is loading message. If this loading is false and the Pokemon data is not null, we are going to show the data. If not, we are going to show Pokemon not found. Next, let's create a Pokemon avatar component and add a Pokemon avatar props interface to make this component receive a detailed Pokemon as a prop. Let's add a Pokemon color state so we can add the background color. Let's also add a get Pokemon color function to get the average color from our Pokemon image using the utility created on the previous video. We will use the image URL from the sprites attribute of our detailed Pokemon object. If the color has a value, we will set the color state. Let's also add a use effect hook to call this function once at the start of the component life cycle and set the color. Back in the Pokemon detail component, let's add a grid component. We will make the component take the whole width container on small screens and half the width on bigger screens using the XS and SM attributes. Remember that the whole width is 12 points. And let's add the Pokemon avatar component inside it passing the Pokemon as a prop. Let's go back to the Pokemon avatar component and add a card component to it. We will set its background color equal to the Pokemon color state. Let's also add a card content component and a card media component inside it to hold our Pokemon image. Now that we see that it's working, let's structure this better by moving the color logic from this component to the use Pokemon hook, so we can get the color directly from the hook and reuse it across our application. Let's paste the get Pokemon color function in the use Pokemon hook and add the import for the get color from URL utility function. Let's also move the Pokemon color state from the Pokemon avatar component into the use Pokemon hook. We need to add a use effect hook to call the get Pokemon color function each time the Pokemon state changes. Also, we will only call it when the Pokemon is not null. Let's also change the get Pokemon color function to update the Pokemon state. We will use the spread operator to create a new object with all the values from the Pokemon object plus the color of the Pokemon. This way we can have the color of the Pokemon inside the same Pokemon object. For this to work, we need to add the color attribute to the detailed Pokemon interface. We no longer need the Pokemon color state. We also need to change the background color to Pokemon.color in the Pokemon avatar component. Back in the Pokemon detail component, let's add a margin to the top of the grid. In the Pokemon avatar component, let's move the card media component outside the card content component so we can add text below it. We will add the Pokemon name and capitalize it. We are also going to add the Pokemon number. We already receive it from the Pokemon API as ID, but we need to add it to our detailed Pokemon interface. Now we can use this ID in our components. Let's also remove the white color from the text. 
Now, let's create a Pokemon Basic info component to show some of the additional data we are retrieving for this Pokemon from the Pokemon API. Let's go back to the Pokemon Detail component and add the Pokemon Basic info component. We will pass the Pokemon object as a prop. We also need to make a Pokemon Basic info props interface for this component to receive the Pokemon as a prop. Let's add a card component and a card content component inside it. Next, we will add a grid container component to arrange the components inside this card and add some spacing between them. Inside the grid container, let's add a grid item component that will take half the width and add a typography component with a bold text so we can easily differentiate between the height title and the height value. Below it, we will add the height value with a lighter text. Let's repeat the same process for the height, simply copying and pasting the previous grid component and changing height for weight. Let's also add the abilities. For this, we will map over the abilities attribute of the Pokemon object and returning a typography component for each ability with its name. Also, let's add the ability's title. Let's also add the weight value below the weight title. Let's move each pair of components to its own grid item component. Let's do the same for the Pokemon types, iterating over the types array and returning a typography component for each one. Next, let's create a Pokemon stats component. And add it to the Pokemon detail component inside its own grid component and pass it the Pokemon object as a prop. Let's go back to the Pokemon stats component and create the Pokemon stats interface so that it can receive a Pokemon as a prop. Let's create a card component and a card content component. For the Pokemon stats, we are going to use a table component. If the Pokemon object is not null, we are going to show the table component. Inside the table component, we will add a table head component. This component holds the headers of the table. And inside it, we will use a table row component to show the row of headers. Each Pokemon stat will be its own table cell component inside the table row component, similar to a spreadsheet. Let's also capitalize it and move it inside a grid. Let's also add some spacing. We will iterate over each Pokemon stat and return a table cell component for each one, showing the corresponding stat value. Back in the Pokemon Detail component, we are going to add a button component and pass a link component as a prop. We are going to redirect the user to the Pokemon list when they click this button. The link component is a component from React Router DOM that allows us to make a redirection. As you can see, when we click the button, we go back to the Pokemon list. And also, when we click a Pokemon card, we go back to the detail page. That way, we can move between each Pokemon. This was part 3 of the React Pokedex series. In the next video, we will add a search box so you can easily search Pokemon by name. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video, and don't forget to share and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Feel free to ask for tutorial suggestions on the comment section. Until next time.